Hi everyone. So this is the motorcycle I built for the upcoming Technic Challenge. I decided I want to build something much thinner and slicker than the original Lego Ducati. And this is it. Uh, because I really like the look of the extended rear swing arm, I decided to replicate that in uh, Lego form. And compared to the original Ducati, I made the whole bike much thinner, as you can see, and much lower. Now, one more thing I also did with this bike, which I never did before, is that I actually gave it a continuously variable transmission. Basically, if we take this apart, let's see. So basically, there's a rubber band here that is driven by two cones. Uh, this way, when you move the rubber band up or down, you change the gear ratio of the gearbox. And this linkage is used to control the position of the rubber band. As you can see, the arm is moving in the background, up and down, and then this pushes the rubber band uh, along the cones. Now, of course, this works better when the wheel is driven, which is why I will motorize this and show you how it works. The buoys provides the motor with a constant speed. So by moving this lever, you can easily change the ratio of the gearbox. And uh, here's the comparison to the Ducati. As you can see, the, the Lego's Ducati is a much taller and shorter. But if we check from the sides, you can see that the my bike is much thinner. Uh, I think the the maximum width, uh, uh, with, without counting the handlebars, is around 10 studs in the back. The average is around 9 studs compared to Ducati, which I think reaches over 13 studs uh, at the gear shifter, so. And it's also, Ducati has way more holes and things like that. So I'm quite proud that my bicycle is actually much, much more complete, let's say like that, yeah. I also just wanted this motorcycle to be uh, very detailed. So I put a lot of effort in uh, covering up the internals and the engine. Once you open the engine, you can see the red covers above the V6 engine. You can see the exhaust that goes uh, on both sides of the, of the bike. Uh, the swing arm is made in a different color, so it kind of stands out. There's, there are braking discs in the back and of course in the front. Uh, the front. The front tire is actually the rear one from the Ducati. So it's uh, the thick one. And the rear uh, tire is the one from the uh, from the Harley Davidson uh, uh, model. I also took uh, great care about detailing the, the dash. You can see there are three gauges here. Uh, let's, let me try to show you all three. So there's a big one in the center and uh, it's kind of hard to see. I'm gonna have to move it like this. And there are two smaller ones on the sides. But these are kind of hard to make out right now. Um, also, uh, I tried to reduce the gaps as much as possible, so the way the, the fuel tank is made, so there are almost no visible gaps. So I'm quite proud of this model, and uh, I think it's one of my best bikes I made so far. And yeah, of course, we cannot forget that there's also the stand that goes on the rear, which keeps the bike. I also took uh, great care to make this bike as aerodynamic as possible. So it starts in the front with these small winglets that are one on each side. And you can see here there's a there's a massive radiator grill. And yes, the bike has a complete front fender. And the aerodynamics uh, continue down the flat bottom here. 
and they basically end up with this massive diffuser which is made out of six of these small panels so this is one of the biggest diffuser I ever put on a model and I'm really proud of the way it turned out it looks very sporty very aggressive and I think it's one of my best bikes I ever built